Hello there. Welcome back. Pithy Bugs channel, where every day is laundry day. As uh, pointed out by Chiro75 last week. But laundry isn't the only thing we're getting done today. In this video, we will be making a head tube reamer. A head tube reamer is used to face and ream the head tube, also known as finishing. A Google search will bring up a bunch of pics like this. You can see that uh, you stick this thing in a head tube as seen here. And uh, I decided to uh, make one of these rather than buy one because I'm cheap. And uh, a tool like this new goes for around 500 bucks. So uh, let's break it down, shall we? Here's the design I drew up, nothing groundbreaking. We'll start off with the body. I'll turn a piece of aluminum for this, and for the handle, I'll use steel. Next, we have the facer. I already own one of these. For the shaft, I'll use a threaded rod. The reamer, I purchased one of those. That is secured with a nut. And then at the bottom of the shaft, we have a cone that I'll turn from aluminum. And finally, a spring tensioned with a nut. Okay, this is a bottom bracket facer reamer tool I picked up a while back. Turns out the facer is the same one used on the Park Tool head tube facer. So I'll go ahead and borrow this one. It's part number 690. And the reamer tool I had to purchase, that is part number 7542. Some other parts include a threaded rod, some aluminum round, and a spring. There's a few other smaller pieces missing, but you'll see those later. All right, let's get started. Here's a little trick I saw on welding tips and tricks. Jody used a bar of Irish spring soap as cutting lubricant. So I asked my wife if she had any soap I could use, and she had some that she didn't like the smell of. So she gave it to me. I gotta say, it had a really strong fragrance and uh, the garage just filled up with this, this smell. Whoa, settle down. Here I am facing the workpiece that will be the body uh, very carefully. And I'm doing that because uh, there's nothing holding it uh, and it's sticking way out. And uh, while I was doing this, I couldn't stand the smell of that soap any longer, so I put it in a bag. But uh, I ended up just throwing it away a few minutes later. And turning down the workpiece, because uh, I'm going to put this on a steady rest in a bit. Here I am marking the drill for the depth I want. This is my starter drill. And now this drill is a 17 30 seconds and that is used for a 5 8 11 thread. And finally, I started using a 5 8 drill uh, just to open up a portion of the end because I don't want to thread the whole body. But I, after drilling a small portion, I tested it out and wanted a more snug fit. So I ended up uh, boring it instead. That's more like it. And now I'm threading it. And now uh, I'm marking down the section that I will turn down for the, uh, the cutting tools to mount onto. And you'll notice it's got a flared taper on the end. And uh, that's because I couldn't move the tool too close to the live center, uh, the back end of the tool would have dug into it. So uh, I got a plan for that a little later on, you will see. Here I am uh, facing um, the flat side that the tool will uh, snug up against. Uh, 
Okay, so now it's time to uh, get rid of that flared end. And what I've done is I flipped the tool upside down and I'm running the machine in reverse. So now I can get right up to the end without hitting my live center. And here I am filing the, uh, the end very carefully because I gotta get the file in there without hitting the live center. And now while I'm at the lathe, let's make the cone. So it didn't take long to find a wild cone in my scrap box. Turning down to 88 degree taper, a bit less steep than what was on there before. And facing the end so it's not too sharp after I drill it. using my thread cutting tool to get a little bevel on the end and uh, making the bevel deeper with the file and now I'm parting it you'll notice I run the parting tool upside down as well and the machine in reverse it's a little trick for uh, mini, mini lathes And now back to the body. This thing needs a handle. I'll drill it and then uh, press fit the rod into it. The drill is around 13.5 millimeters and the rod is at around 15.8 millimeters. I'll cut the rod to length, but before I start turning it, I'll drill the body. Uh, this way I can use it to test the diameter of the rod. After I turn down a small section of the handle uh, down to the desired diameter, a diameter that will allow me to press fit it into the body. I then marked the depth with a sharpie because I'll need to keep moving the compound out every time I need to move the workpiece. Because the handle doesn't need to be an exact diameter, I can get away with doing it this way. Otherwise, uh, if you needed a constant diameter, you'd never want to do this. Okay, now that it's turned down to the press fit size, I'm marking the center where I want to leave this diameter untouched. This is the area that will press fit into the body. And now I'll just clean up the ends. making sure the body fits on the end. And I had a feeling this would happen. Uh, I turned down the center a tad too much and now it won't press fit. I didn't account for heat. 
uh, when the handle cooled down, it shrunk. So to get around this, I used a trick I had learned in my first machining class. You take a center punch and uh, dimple the surface. I don't own a center punch, so I used a sharpened tungsten. Uh, it's a bit too brittle for this type of thing, but uh, it did the job. Now I can press fit the handle into the body. I'll use my press, or I won't. I <laughs> uh, can't use my press. So um, you're really not supposed to do this, but I had no choice, and I didn't want to build something just to press this rod. So I used a steel mallet and a leather uh, piece of leather to muffle the shock of hitting it. And we are getting really close, so before I assemble this thing, I'm checking to make sure the threaded rod is straight. So I put it on my uh, alignment table, which is the flattest surface I have. And uh, here I am assembling it. And uh, as I was doing this, I realized I forgot something. The body needs pins to stop the facer from turning. Uh, so I'll turn down this steel round for the pins. Alright, now I'm drilling holes for the, the pins. And I have my center drill extended all the way out. It won't go out any further. And it just barely reached the material. And uh, now drilling the hole. Uh, the head was all the way up, so I, I couldn't. Um, I had to take the drill off in order to move it. And turning the pins. Now I need to uh, press fit it, and the vise is just a tad too small. So to get a little more clearance, I'm removing the jaws. And I'm marking uh, the jaws for which sides they go on for when I put them back on. And now I'm press fitting it. A little side note, I countersunk the hole that I drilled for the pins. Uh, the reason I did this is because when I press fit the pins, they will push the surface around the hole. And uh, I need this surface to be really flat. So to counter that, I, uh, I put a counter sink and on the hole and that fixes that problem. There it is, my pins are set, and uh, one's a little higher, but I can live with that. Here I am testing the uh, facer fit, and it fits well. Okay, let's review. We used a 5 8 threaded rod. The Park Tool Reamer uses a 5 8 Acme thread, which has a much more accurate diameter. Uh, but I'm cheap, and I didn't want to buy that and a tap to go with it, so I didn't. Uh, shout out to Joe for the tip on the Park 2 Reamer. Thank you, Joe. Next up, 5 8 nuts. A spring with 223 millimeter outer diameter, 17.6 inner diameter, 2.3 millimeter wire thickness, and that is 80 millimeters long. A Park 2 facer, part number 690. Park Tool Reamer, part number 7542, a cone, and finally, the body.
Okay, guys, that's a wrap. Man, that was a long video. Uh, for those of you who stuck around, thanks for watching. Uh, next video, I... Gosh, what are we doing in the next video? I think I gotta get a C-tube onto this bike somehow. If you did hang in here to the end and liked this video, please consider subscribing. Have a good week and I'll see you later.